Welcome back to The Chosen Journey with Big Money Grip, Steve Carsey, and The Chosen Lawyer. As promised, Steve Carsey, last week I told you there's a big return of a big bat and it could change the whole complexion of a team. We talked about the Yankees last week. Now we got to go back to my pick for World Series champions, and that is the Philadelphia Phillies and Bryce Harper. It's funny because why did this kind of come into my head? Uh, I saw this picture of Yoshida from the Red Sox meeting up with uh, Bryce Harper, who was apparently his favorite player growing up. Uh, he named his dog after him. And Harper gave him a whole goodie bag of gave his bat from uh, the playoffs, his cleats, and he gets all excited. I got to expect that if Yoshida is excited, the rest of the Phillies must be pretty excited as well. Yeah, absolutely. To get somebody back that quickly <clears throat> after Tommy John, even though he's not playing the field, and insert him into a lineup, uh, with what he's capable of doing on a daily on a daily basis. I mean, uh, everybody saw what he did last year when he had hurt his arm and he got inserted into the DH role. Uh, it's fortunate that baseball put the DH rule in, right, in the National League. Otherwise, Bryce Harper would not be playing at this point. He wouldn't have played last year and he wouldn't have played now because of uh, the Tommy John and, and how his arm was hurt. But, uh, you know, getting back to Bryce, again, it's uplifting – uh, it's just a, it's another power bat in that lineup, how long it's going to take him to get up to speed and get on time and do that. And I think he's done pretty well. Uh, he's a very talented player. And, uh, you know, again, I just think that, uh, it's, it's one of those things when you insert a guy that comes back off an injury into a lineup and he can give you production, uh, it, it's going to make everybody better around him. Do you remember the position he was drafted as? I don't. He was a catcher once upon a time. Can you imagine now Bryce Harper is a catcher? <laughs> I do remember. I do remember that yeah. him and uh, Gallo played on the same team. Uh, oh, uh, I did. He was a catcher. One sec, you're freezing up. Sorry. Hold on. That's video. You're, fr you're frozen, Steve. Right. Sorry. And, uh, technology, some trees. Hold on, hold Am on. Am I frozen? You're... Let's talk. You're moving around a bit. Hello? Hello? I think we're okay. Yeah, we're good now. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we had a little bit of a freeze. All right, all right. There. So back to the catcher, Bryce Harper. Yeah, just uh, him and Joey Gallo played together in Vegas uh, on, a, on a youth team coming up and uh, I do remember him them saying that he did catch it at some point, but uh, that was not uh, in my brain at the particular time that you were uh, just doing that. I'm thinking first base or outfield uh, for him, but uh, not catcher. And, I, you know, once he's healed and back into the field, he's never going to be your emergency catcher. Can't see that happening ever, never, ever. Now, look at the timeline. It's funny. Two days before my birthday, November 23rd, he decided to have his TJ surgery. So... Is, is this a bionic man, Steve? Like, am I reading these numbers right? So it's supposed to be 9 to 12 months time period, give or take, to come back. Now, I know he's not a pitcher, and he's not going to be in the outfield, but six less than six months back? Like, how is this humanly possible? Have we ever seen this? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a few other guys that have taken a little bit longer than what he has. He's obviously the, the fastest. But, again, uh, you got to look at the at the circumstances, right? what position he plays, where is he coming back to, um, you know, how much is he going to play? What is he capable of wearing on his arm? Because we see him playing with a, uh, you know, a brace on his arm, but he can swing the bat. And that's the one part of it. I think that's the main focus of him being able to get extension and, and in that arm and, uh, you know, be able to swing the bat first. He would not be back if he had to throw. He still would be on the shelf because he's not able to play first base. He's not able to play the outfield. And that's the difference with a pitcher. When they say it's a year, 10 months to a year, that's a pitcher for sure. As a position player, it becomes different. It becomes, uh, you know, what am I capable of doing at the five month mark? Hitting off a tee, soft toss, live pitching. How much does it hurt? How strong am I? You know, being younger, I think, helps him, you know, recuperate the hard work you put in. 
there's so many different layers to what it takes for a guy to come back. And then again, when you're throwing and he's going to come back throwing soon, uh, he's throwing off a flat surface. He's not throwing off a 10 or 11 inch mound going downhill and throwing at max velocity pitch after pitch after pitch. So uh, at the end of the day, you got to take the comparables out with pitching and position players. And then you just got to see what each guy uh, on an individual basis is capable of doing on his road to recovery uh, piece by piece. So I'm going to give you, and I'm going to oversimplify this thing, but we got the major pro and the major cons. The major pro side of it, is it more the bat in the lineup and as far as, you know, as far as improving that lineup overall and the effect he brings that way? Is it is more the clubhouse effect as far as the leader, the intensity? Because that guy looks like he's on 10 Red Bulls all the time. He looks like he skips no days off. He seems like the kind of guy who's in practice first, leaves last. Like he seems like a very hard worker. Everybody has very positive things to say about him. Uh, is it more the intangibles or is it literally the production in your mind with him? It's a combination of both. I mean, uh, one, it's uplifting to get a superstar back in your lineup who can help create production because it just makes your lineup deeper, uh, more guys that uh, the pitcher has to face and, and the harder he has to work. Um, you know, and then in the clubhouse, you know, having a guy around who has the experience that he has, who's gone through what he has, and, uh, you know, a guy who can help the younger guys learn. And I know Philly has a lot of veteran guys because they've signed some here. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I just think that uh, his presence around the clubhouse is uh, a big factor in, in what this team is, is capable and will be able to do moving forward. I mean, considering how much he's busted his butt to get back into that lineup, that's got to push a lot of guys, I assume. If guys have a little bit of aches and pains and everything, everybody's playing through it. They're like, he's doing it, we're doing it. I assume that's going to rally them around. I can see that for sure. And they're coming together a very nice time. You know, it was a time where I was questioning their bullpen. Now, all of a sudden, you don't know who's getting to save every night. You know, they, they have a real luxury there, potentially three potential closers at any given night. That's a good thing to have, especially when you don't know who your top five starters are going to be. So I think they're joined together really well. I'm going to give you my con, though. And not to take anything away from these guys because I love I love them overall as players. You know, Schwarber, like watching him in WBC, watching last year's playoffs, the the man's a beast. He's scared. He puts he puts fear into every pitcher. You never know when he's gonna hit one out of the park, literally out of the park. He's got that kind of power. Castellanos, I love him as a gamer. I love him in the clubhouse. I love him in, as part of the team. My question to you is. Are we seeing, though, a situation where we literally on any other team, these could be potential DHs, and now you're playing a full-time outfield. Are they hurting themselves as much as helping themselves by this alignment because they have no choice by putting Harper at DH? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'll have to get back with uh, – I haven't looked at defensive metrics uh, at all uh, before coming on. But, uh, you know, the the defensive run saved at each position tells, tells a story and it tells a lot. But if you're putting a – you know, call it a lackluster defense out there, uh, you know, it's going to hurt you at some point. It's not going to rear its head all the time. But if you're scoring enough runs, you can overcome an error here, an error there, a missed fly ball. But if you're playing really tight games, then, you know, it'll probably show a little bit more. Uh, you know, these guys probably work hard on a daily basis. But, you know, um, defense is, is a really hard thing in, in Major League Baseball. You know, you you got to work hard at it and you got to – be able to do that because if you cannot play defense majority of times you might not get the playing time to play unless there's nobody else available so uh you know i would agree that defensively they may be a little bit below average i would have to check the numbers on that but uh yeah it's it plays a it plays a, a huge factor into a course of a season of how many games you might win or lose uh, on the defensive side of the baseball game I can tell you in the playoffs last year, Castellanos actually quite impressed me with his arm. I was shocked, actually. And uh, I think he had a chip on his shoulder with that. And that's not a bad thing. I think, I don't know, I can't tell you worked necessarily harder because he seems like he's a gamer. But uh, it's a guy who's not afraid to get his jersey dirty and, uh, and he's out there. So I think maybe that earned him the time. Schwarber, long term, I'm shocked that he's not a first baseman. You know, just he's got that build about him. Uh, and then when they had their injuries, you know, uh, with Hoskins out, I thought that he'd move over there. But uh, there's a reason why they pay Robbie Thompson the bucks to figure out those alignments and not me, right? Well, he was, yeah, he was a catcher, right? In college, uh, Schwarber. That's yes. what he got drafted as. 
uh, in, in, with the Cubs as, as a catcher. And then they kind of started, you know, moving him around and putting him in different positions and, and seeing what he can do. So, uh, you know, baseball is a funny game like that. You get drafted as a certain position. And, and, and you do in certain let's, let's, hold on, you're freezing again, sir. Team look for when we look at the analytics. One sec. Oh, you back? There we go. Okay, yeah, it froze again. Yeah, sir. I'm here. Yeah, you're here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it froze again on us. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, I was just saying that. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that uh, teams are 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 different like that these days. Is you'll draft a, a player as a cert, at a certain position, and then ultimately when you get them in your system, uh, you'll kind of see some things and be like, well, maybe that's not the position that we see him in, and we'll start using him in a couple different other positions and see if that's going to work out because we love his bat. Well, if Phillies have an embarrassment of riches as far as the bats go, and if that bullpen is locked down as they seem, you know, maybe they got to get a st- another starter at the deadline, but that's a scary team. And that the way we talked about the AL East last week, the NL East is not going away either. I don't think the Mets are going away. The Braves are definitely not going away. I think that's going to be a dogfight right until the end of September. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I expected that in the NL East. I mean, things have been shaken up. You know, Scherzer suspension. Verlander being hurt, Mets kind of a little hot and cold. It's it's kind of strange to see them, you know, lose whatever it was nine out of the last eleven. They got uh, they got swept by the Rockies, I believe, and I think they got swept by Detroit. So you know, again, maybe playing down to competition uh, is is a can be a key factor. But you know, Buck has a pretty good hold of what his team needs to do, and I think they're going to stick around, like you said. I felt like when the, when Detroit was playing them, a few guys were auditioning potentially, especially Mr. Rodriguez. Wow, he's been lights out for those Tigers. It's amazing, guys, that, you know, sometimes, you know, especially pitchers, middle relievers, spot starters, you know, and all of a sudden they just figure it out with the right team, uh, playing in Comerica there. Something has grown on him. It's amazing. The same way you brought up the other week about Joey Gallo and Mr. Uh, Sonny Gray, maybe the, the answer is just go over to the Twins. Everybody seems to play well when they play for Minnesota for some reason. Yeah, you know what's you know what's worked out for Rodriguez, the what's size that? of the ballpark. It's a it's a huge factor when you got guys that can play defense behind you, and you got a uh, outfield and a ballpark that's really big. Some of those balls that you give up or that are caught are not in the gap or over the you know the green monster. I was gonna say Fenway's dimensions are just a little bit different than Comerica's. Yes, sir. Well, we wish the Phillies the best of luck and congratulations, to Mr. Harper. And hopefully he keeps it up. And uh, I took a look at his numbers the other day and uh, they're pretty much video game numbers. All he's doing is hitting from the second he get there. So uh, good on him. You know, there's a reason why he's a superstar. You know, they are always saying one A, one B with Mike Trout, very different players, but two guys that certainly any team would love to have. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can't go wrong with either one of those players and, uh, you know, the talent shines uh, no matter, you know, where they're at. Speaking of talent shining, when we come back next week, we're going to be having a tribute to one of the greats in baseball and talking about some great video game numbers as well. Steve Carsey, always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and baseball journey with us. And we'll see you back next week on The Chosen Journey. Excellent. Thanks, Jonathan.